Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming you, to you today with the weekly Common Sense MD. I'm going to talk about something that I treat every day in my office, and it's something that I get really excited about talking about because um, not many people really do a good job of treating this disease. And what it is is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the most common thyroid abnormality. Your thyroid is so important. It's not just for thyroid hormone production uh, to regulate your metabolism, but it's also the body's thermostat. It keeps your body at the right temperature so that all the enzy enzymatic and um, chemical and hormonal reactions that take place um, can take place because it has to be the right temperature to do that. But it also helps produce energy from your food and nutrients. So it's all encompassing. You know, it's a small gland located in your neck that's so, so important, especially for women. Um, women have a lot more thyroid disease than men do. Um, but it's complex. Not everybody's the same. And usually when you think of thyroid problems, we think of hypothyroidism. There's hyper and there's hypo. Most, the vast majority of it is hypo or an underactive thyroid. And that's what I want to talk about today is a particular form of hypothyroidism called Hashimoto's thyroidism, hyper, hypothyroidism. 90% of underactive thyroids, if you're hypothyroid, 90% of that is caused by Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And that's an autoimmune disease. You know, we treat so many autoimmune diseases at performance medicine. And this is the main one that we think about when we think about this. As a matter of fact, it's the first autoimmune disease ever discovered. Um, now, autoimmune, what does that mean? It means that your own body is attacking and destroying your thyroid gland. About 10% of the U.S. population has this. 10%. And for every, there's just one man for every seven women that has this. So it's really a woman's disease mostly. It peak effects are around puberty for women, pregnancy, and menopause. Now there is a genetic predisposition to this, but there's always a trigger. Like I've told you before, we all walk around like a loaded gun. The environment pulls the trigger. Um, certain triggers like infections, big one. Iodine can trigger it. Um, hormonal imbalances can trigger it, like we're talking about the women in, in menopause. Toxins, medications can, can trigger this also. Um, typical symptoms of hypothyroidism, as you know, are being tired, gaining weight, thinning hair, brittle nails, constipation, um, even mood disorders can be caused. A lot of times when you see depression or bipolar, even schizophrenia, it can be cured by correcting the thyroid. Um, I've read in some reports that one third of all cases of schizophrenia can be cured by T3, cytomel. Um, you also can have cold intolerance, heat intolerance. It's very common to have cold hands and feet. Um, Sometimes at first you'll see symptoms of hyperthyroidism when it's really hypothyroidism. Symptoms like anxiety, um, weight loss, tachycardia. That's when it's first getting going because it doesn't just go like that. It kind of pulses to an end. Um, so if you suspect it, um, you need to have the right test to diagnose it because there's so many normals out there and so many different symptoms and so many normal tests that really uh, are the tip of the iceberg. You definitely need to have uh, TSH, TPO antibodies, free T and three, free T4 testing done. Just a T, TSH and a T4, which most doctors do, is not going to cut it. Um, you know, it may take years of having this autoimmune disease before your TSH finally goes up and your doctor will diagnose it. So, you know, if you can nip it at the bud and find the triggers, then you can actually cure it. Um, so if you've been told by your provider that you have normal thyroid, but you have a lot of these symptoms, you probably have a suboptimal thyroid. And most likely it's, it's Hashimoto's. 
Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's just a subclinical, non-autoimmune, poor-functioning thyroid. The treatment sometimes is different. A lot, most of the time it's different. So you have to really check those antibodies to, to see what you have. Um, and a lot of times, once they finally diagnose you, and your TSH is out the roof, and they'll start treating you with medications. And I used to do this for years. And you're gonna, and we usually told them, well, you're gonna be on this Synthroid or Levothyroxine the rest of your life. Um, but if you catch it early, meaning check those antibodies early, uh, your thyroid can actually recover. About 20% of the time, you can actually recover your thyroid function and not have to take medications. This is something that took me years to really understand. Um, so how do you treat it when you, when you find that you have it? Well, you have to find your triggers, and they can be many. Um, you have to eliminate the triggers and treat them. You have to heal the gut. Remember, most autoimmune diseases start in the gut. Um, so in your gut, we're talking about the gut, in addition to digesting your food and absorbing your nutrients, your gut is responsible for keeping the bad stuff out of your bloodstream. Um, harmful substances out of your bloodstream, which is what triggers inflammation when you have that intestinal permeability, i.e. leaky gut, which is a non-medical term, but it's real. Um, and that's what triggers inflammation and triggers all these autoimmune diseases. Um, so think about treating the, the cause of it first. I mean, even stress can precipitate the cause. Um, treat the infection. It could be bacterial like Lyme disease or H. pylori. Uh, so many of these people that I see with Hashimoto's have reflux. And usually it's not that you have too much acid, it's that you don't have enough. Um, it could be caused by a virus like Epstein-Barr. It could be parasitic. You know, parasites are pretty common. So you really need to identify what's triggering this. Um, Bacterial causes may take antibiotics. Viruses may take other things like herbs, like monolaurins, one of my favorite, licorice root, quercetin, NAC, CoQ10. If it's a parasite, you may respond to aloe, uh, barberry, garlic, one of my favorites, grapefruit seed extract, pomegranate, turmeric, one of my favorites, and also wormwood, which is our Artemisia, it's kind of hard to pronounce, but very common parasite, um, Artesinia. Um, but I know you've got to heal the gut. There's no doubt in my mind that you have to heal that gut. And for, for severe cases of the gut, you may need to go on an elemental diet for a couple weeks. That's a liquid diet with kind of expensive amino acids that you have to get through it. It tastes terrible, but if you can get through it, it can heal a severely bad gut. You may need then need to go on a FODMAP diet uh, where you eliminate the bad uh, sugars from your diet. Um, you may need to go on a Candida diet. Uh, you may need a GI map to, or a GI effects to really kind of determine you know, where you're at with your gut microbiome. Very important. Now, treatment with medications. Most doctors just use Synthroid or the generic form called levothyroxine. Um, you know, there's a lot of drawbacks to using this. Um, you may not convert the T4, which that is, to T3, the active form of uh, your thyroid hormone. Um, you know, it's promoted and all, and it can work. But in my experience, I like the combination T3, T4 preparations like Armour and NP. Uh, it's been around 100 years. About 90% of my patients tell me they feel better on that than they do the levothyroxine. Uh, and if you do take levothyroxine, please take the brand name Synthroid. Um, but I like the compounded T3, T4 uh, medicines because there's no fillers, there's no, it's no pig in it, there's no TPO that could actually aggravate Hashimoto's. So my favorite is a compounded T3, T4. It's just a lot cleaner and you can dose it better. I mean, they can make it to whatever dose you want. There's a lot more dosing strategies with that. Sometimes I'll use just plain T3 called Cytomel. Uh, it's good for some people. Um, 
when you start a medication or change your doses, in about six to eight weeks, you have to check the levels. And every once in a while, I like to check the TPO as well to kind of see if I'm tamping down that, um, those antibodies and know I'm getting somewhere. Um, there's a lot of medicines that can trigger, um, in addition to gut, there's a lot of medications that can trigger uh, Hashimoto's, like antibiotics, which um, can screw your gut microbiome up, of course. And acids can do it, especially PPIs. But even prolonged use of medicines like famotidine. Uh, oral contraceptives are very common to trigger this. Um, so you have to address the depletions also. There's a lot of minerals and vitamins that get depleted. If you have Hashimoto's, you definitely need to go gluten-free. And you're going to probably need zinc. You're going to need selenium. You may need NAC and acetylcysteine. Um, but, for example, glutens. People with Hashimoto's are five times more likely to get celiac disease. And celiac disease can be cured by just a pure gluten-free diet. Um, also, you should probably eliminate soy and dairy. Soy is really bad. Um, like I said, low stomach acid is common. Uh, you need to try betaine for that. I, I take betaine myself and digestive enzymes to help your gut work better. Um, you need to look at your iron levels because without the storage form of iron, ferritin, which we check on a Cleveland panel, um, your thyroid won't work very well. And a lot of times if I, if I get your thyroid a little bit tuned up, but if your iron levels are so low, you're going to continue to have that hair loss that we see all the time, especially bothers women. It's tough. Um, and iron won't work with that vitamin C. So this stuff gets complex, I told you. Um, you have to look at genetics like the MTHFR genotype, that methylation gene, um, when you can't convert that homocysteine to methionine. You've got to build up of that inflammatory amino acid called homocysteine, which is a risk factor for a lot of stuff, including cardiovascular disease and Hashimoto's. Um, what about iodine? You know, a lot of people just start taking iodine indiscriminately and not without checking if they're high or low. So it's kind of like a, a U-shaped curve with that. It can, be, it can be bad too high and it can be bad too low. So you have to check it. But it is controversial in the Hashimoto community. Um, it, you know, in doing a lot of research on this, it's really not good for people with Hashimoto's. It may be beneficial for those people that have just a suboptimal thyroid without the antibodies. Um, so you have to look at all that stuff. It, it gets complex. Um, what about iodized salt? If you'll note, we didn't see Hashimoto's before 1928. I guess it was 1924 when we discovered Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, because we didn't have iodized salt. In other words, iodine can cause Hashimoto's. Um, you, then you hear about you shouldn't eat cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower if you have uh, a thyroid problem. And in some cases, you shouldn't. But for most pe people with Hashimoto's, you can do it safely. Um, if you have just a suboptimal thyroid, you should probably avoid raw cruciferous vegetables. But if you cook them, they're fine. That's, that's something else that a lot of people don't know about. Um, other tips, you really need to check um, your thyroid medicines in the morning before you take your med when you go to the doctor. It can make a big difference. And it, it can vary a little bit. It's, so it's, do it the same time every time. And try if you can, try to avoid taking your thyroid medicine the morning you go to the doctor. Just take it the day before. Uh, some people even take it at night, but you need to take it on an empty stomach and with water or black coffee. You know, it was recently recognized that uh, black coffee will not affect the absorption of your thyroid medication. Uh, that's kind of new. Um, but remember, we treat, we treat symptoms in people, not labs. You need the lab work to know what's going on to give you the ratios, etc. And sometimes we have to do a deep dive like taking more antibody tests and doing reverse T3s and sometimes checking um, your adrenal labs as well. Um, but if you have symptoms and you're told that your thyroid is normal, 
uh, find a provider who will do the proper testing and who understands how to treat this. It's complex. Like I say, your insulin's involved in this, your adrenals, um, nobody's the same. I love low-dose naltrexone for the treatment of Hashimoto's as well as most of the antibody uh, diseases that we see. Um, at Performance Medicine, we have a couple providers that have Hashimoto's. I've learned a lot from, from them. And so it's, it's really it's interesting and great to treat. Um, one of the best books I've ever read on, on this, and I've read many, is called Hashimoto's Thyroiditis Root Cause by Isabella Wentz. She's a PharmD. Um, if you read this book and you understand it, I guarantee you, you will know more than 99% of physicians, including endocrinologists, about Hashimoto. So I hope this helps you. If there's questions, please come in and get the appropriate test and get treated for this. Your life will be different. Thank you. This is Dr. Tom Rogers.